Hey everybody. In today's video, I am going to show you a fun new way to do a resist that I think is super easy. You can see what it looks like on this card. To begin with, I have this beautiful Simon Says Stamp stamp set. And the newest colors of Distress Ink from Colorbox. Their color names are so cute. Bumblebee is my favorite. This is the introduction to yellow to their line. Inchworm, hilarious. It's all good. And I have a piece of hot press watercolor paper here. I normally use cold press, but I'm using hot press because of the resist method here. Now this set is a fantastic sympathy set and I am going to be making a sympathy card today. So I have this larger butterfly set up and I'm just sort of making sure that it's fitting within a card front size using the rulers on my Misty, and then positioning another butterfly next to it. So I'll pick these up with the lid of my Misty, and then I will stamp them in VersaFine Claire. Y'all know how much I love this ink for watercolor. And this is a very finely detailed image, which is perfect for VersaFine Claire because it doesn't get goopy and sort of obscure those details. So I think I'll ink it again. Looks like in that one little section of the larger butterfly, I didn't get enough pressure on the lid. But one thing you do need to know about photopolymer stamps is when you're using more than one stamp on the lid of your Misty, they can actually be different depths. And so you might have to stamp a couple of times to get a super crisp image, which I have now, and I just love these. So now I'm gonna take this amazing resist pen. I love this thing. I can't remember where I first saw it, if it was on jet pens or I don't know, but, when I read the description of it, I thought, you know what? I am going to try a resist with this because my favorite method of coloring is watercolor. And as far as like a pen-like tool for resist, I had used crayon. I don't know if you remember that technique where you would use crayon on glossy cardstock and then you could brayer ink over it and that would create a resist. But I like a resist to be something I can watercolor over. And so having a handy dandy tool like this, I am super excited about. So I'm going to color in the little dots. This is sort of a monarch adjacent butterfly because it has these little spots. But it's also sort of fanciful and not realistic, which I love. It has sort of a Zentangle look, and I find that super appealing, as you know. Now, because this pen is clear, and it's also dimensional, which you can sort of see here where the light is reflecting off of it, you can get a good amount of detail without having to really see a different color paper. So it's a little bit easier for me to see what I'm doing than it is for you in this video, but it's very easy to use. I'm flipping my watercolor paper mostly so that I don't run my hand through any of the pen marks that are still wet, although I will say this dries very quickly. This is a great alternative to masking fluid. I've been looking for a long time for the perfect masking fluid. I like the Schmincke one because it didn't smell bad, but I noticed the other day when I went to go open it up, I haven't used it in a while, it was kind of gunked up in the top of the container. So I was thrilled when I saw this because this isn't gonna get gunked up. Now you can see the dimension here, especially on the little dots. So I'm just gonna let that dry. Now it's dry to the touch, you'll wanna just run your hand over it. And I'm going to take my little scrap of a craft mat <laughs> and I abuse 
all the tools. They're working for me. I'm not working for them. So I don't feel bad about it. I'm just going to smush a few colors of the new inks onto my craft mat. I'm super excited about Bumblebee. The first release didn't have a yellow. And you know, I can't do my Holy Trinity if I don't have a yellow. Now I'm spraying the back of the cardstock just to keep the front of the cardstock from warping. This is a little trick I like to do whenever I'm going to have a lot of water. And I am going to try to have a lot of water on here because I want you to be able to see how well this pen resists the ink. And these will get muddy on your mat. So you'll see like my blue and my yellow have gone together to make a green. But that's okay if you choose your combo. Oh, that's so bright and pretty. Very well. It, do it totally doesn't matter. Now you could also stop at this point and dry your watercolor paper and then add another layer of color on top of that. It's totally up to you if you wanted more texture. That would definitely help, but I really like the way that this is looking. So you can already see how well that pen is resisting the ink. I'll just dab up a little of the extra here so it's not too wet. And then I'll clean off my scrap of craft mat, which I probably need to really clean because it still has some acrylic paint on it. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of this purple color because it's pretty and because I can. And I know that purple and green are complementary, but you know how I feel about that. You just do it. And if you add it while it's wet, it'll actually make a little space for itself. And I love that tiny touch of purple there. I'm going to add just a touch more ink. And get some more kind of graphic dark spots in the middle and then I'll blot that up sort of around the butterfly but then I have a little more intense blue but I can still see the other colors and you can see especially after I blot it how distinctly that masked out portion is preserved it's very crisp totally white of the paper no bleeding through really really nice so I'll dry this just a little bit. You can always tell when it's totally dry. It's not cool to the touch anymore, especially in my climate <laughs> where cool to the touch is easy to notice. So I'll set this up in my Misty to add the cinnamon. So I'll remove the butterflies. And then I'm going to use the big prayers cinnamon. It's so bold and such a contrast to these detailed line art images that I really love the way that looks. And I just need to make sure it's straight, which I'm not capable of. I don't know why I'm even trying. Somebody needs to come up with a tool for somebody like me. Here's one, but still my brain can screw this up. What I like to do when I'm using this tool is position the sentiment so that I just barely see the black line of the grid through the bottom of each letter. And that gives me a little prayer of being right, but not always guaranteed. Now, somebody called me in the middle of my video, and so I had to start over. But anyway, I stamped it on grid paper so you can see that it's straight. That also gives me a prayer of getting it straight. And so now I'm actually ready to stamp. And please don't call anybody who's filming videos with their phone. I'm just saying, it's rude. You never know when you're going to be interrupting someone's video and making them sad, like I was. So I'll stamp this again, Versafine Clara again. And now that's nice and bold. It is a bigger sentiment, so if you need to stamp it a couple times, don't worry. My only tip is make sure your paper's dry before you do this. But look at that perfect resist. It's dimensional, it's white, it's beautiful. Simple and easy. Thanks so much for watching.